Welcome one and welcome all to the People's Channel Orchids for Dummies. Now this is Foul Pal Darrell speaking and in today's video darling, in today's video darling, I will be updating all of you guys on all of my Phalaenopsis orchids growing indoors. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. So starting with my healthiest of orchids all the way down to the sickest of orchids. This is my Phalaenopsis Maria. I got her from the Redlands Orchid Show. Okay. I got her from a heavily garden. Okay. Now she, she is now dormant. She is only growing her area roots very slowly. She is um, slowly, very slowly pulling nutrients from her bottom leaves to give her the energy to rebloom for me. She has not so far lost any leaves in my care. And if you want to know how I get my leaves so beautiful and shiny, I will leave a link above showing you all of the methods that you can do to clean the leaves of your Phalaenopsis orchids. Okay, this is my Shellerania Wilson. Um, she, a root has already taken a hold of her name tag, so I like to leave her alone. I got her from Redlands Orchid Show as well, and as you can see, I've been using that seaweed kelp on her, and her roots is really just taken off. Now she has not rebloomed for me, nor has she produced any new leaves but she is very established in this second pot, second or third pot of hers that I have done since last year. Stay tuned have with me now two different Phalaenopsis orchids that are in good health, but just needs a repotting. This is my Phalaenopsis that I named um, after my grandmother, Betty. So this is a memory plant. She has not lost any leaves, okay? She has not lost any leaves. She bloomed for me. She was fabulous, and now she is in a desperate need to be repot. These are signs and symptoms of um, nutrient deficiencies. So what that means is that she is no longer absorbing um, absorbing the nutrients that she needs in this setup, okay? So she really needs a repotting, and she needs one quickly. That would be done. Now, this is another Phalaenopsis orchid. Um, that was given to me a cakey. It was given to me at my Orchid Society meetings from a member. That is one of the reasons I love going to society meetings. Uh, last year alone, in 2019, I got almost 10 orchids that was given to me at different times just through my local Orchid Society. But as you can see, this baby is beautiful. It just um, came out of bloom. It held on to that one bloom for um, about three months, and now it is just sitting here dormant. Only thing that is growing is the area roots are out looking for a new home. So up next is some of the Phalaenopsis orchids that my foul pal Danielle sent me. Foul pal Danielle is an incredible brewer. She is an inc incredible collector of all different types of orchids, and she is also my right-hand man, okay? So if you wanna mess with Danielle, you gotta mess with me. So this is um, one of my favorite Phalaenopsis, not, that, not only that she sent me, but that I have in my collection, because she has never rebloomed for me. Now remember, this was a sick Phalaenopsis, but she has never um, rebloomed for me but she has also never lost any leaves. So she has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight leaves going on nine. Um, active root production. Um, she is very well established in this pot. I just had to repot her because she outgrew the last pot, which was that three inch pot, a much smaller pot. Now this is a miniature Phalaenopsis, but as you can see that they can grow pretty big. This is also my first Phalaenopsis that rebloomed for me that I was growing in the method of water culture. Now, last year I experimented with a lot of different pots. As you can see right here, you got three different types of pots. But this clay pot, you will hear a lot of good things about them when it comes to 
growers that like to overwater and over fertilize because it's porous, meaning that it is going to push all of that extra salt, extra fertilizer outside of the pot. Me, on the other hand, this is not a good indication that she is enjoying this setup. Okay, even with the Orchiata bark, she is not enjoying it. Now, she was thriving, doing just wonderful in water culture. So, I'm going to reintroduce her to water culture. This is another Phalaenopsis that I dropped on the floor. Um, she has not rebloomed for me, but she definitely has not died. I would like to pride myself. I think it's okay to say it now with it being January 2020. But last year, I did not lose any orchids. I did not have any orchids to die on me. And I give much of that success to my foul pals for each one teach one. And I also give uh, give it to myself with just being prepared, knowing that I lost a lot of orchids the last winter. And so that whole year I was wondering and asking myself, what could I do better to um, be prepared for winter with my Phalaenopsis orchids? So no orchids are being killed over here at Orchids for Dummies. Stay are still stay in tune. How incredible of you. Thank you so much. Viewers like you make me so, so eager to post another video. So please, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe, ring the bell, and you will be notified of every video that I post, which will be incredible. So these Phalaenopsis right here are the orchids that I received from a local garden shop called Oak Street Garden Shop here in Birmingham, Alabama. And as you can see, they are all still with me. Now, with these being just Phalaenopsis that were given to me from a store, I chose to use these to run different experiments on. Okay, we are not gonna talk about all of the different experiments that I ran on them, but as you can see, we have two that is in water culture. We're gonna clean those roots up. Yes, we are. But as you can see, she's still with me. I have this one. I'm sorry, foul pals, but I have this one right here that the leaf actually broke off of it. And as you can see, I have the cinnamon that bonded the wound. Nothing else has happened from this orchid since then. It's not dropping leaves and it's definitely not growing leaves or roots. That is why I am going to start adding some citric acid to its feeding. And we will see if that charges it back up and makes, makes it start growing again. Now, this is also another orchid. Just wanted to make sure that, um, just wanted to make sure you hear a lot of people say, well, oh my God, I have to hurry up and repot my Phalaenopsis orchid as soon as I get it. It's on Dev's door. Well, I these are orchids that I am testing to see is that true or not. So these are orchids that you will see in future videos that I will be letting you guys know what I learned from my experimenting on them, okay? This is another one as well that I kept in the pot. Um, this leaf right here is grown in my care. Like I told you, most times when you bring a new orchid home, it will have a little setback, okay? Um, so I have a remedy for that now being an experienced Phalaenopsis grower now, I know what to do to prevent that or at least try to prevent it from happening to an orchid like you. This is a leaf grown in my care as well. As you can see, I left the stalks on. I told you just different experiments that I was trying on all of these orchids. So if you ever wonder where does Foul Pal Darrell gets his advice and how long has he been growing well i get all of my advice from the american orchid society from all of my foul pals in um different youtube channels that's why i always say each one teach one what i do is articulate it into a way that new beginners can understand because myself am only a two-year beginner so i'm still fresh in the game as well but i focused predominantly on phalaenopsis orchids and I go to local society meetings and um, get all of that information from them. I go to different garden shops, garden shows, and get advice from them, advice from the growers, advice from the judges. And I leave and make videos of it all for you to see. Stay tuned.
So below are two of my other phalaenopsis orchids that I'm growing in the method of water culture. Now, this is a no judgment zone. Um, although I have them in water culture, um, I have not done the work as far as cleaning those roots up and things of that sort because some of them I am actually experimenting on as well just to see how vigorous the Phalaenopsis orchid is. Also, um, a video to come explaining black mold. Um, from what I've been researching, black mold can actually be something positive for your orchids and your indoor plants. It's only because it's unsightly that we try to remove it, but it's in fact not something that is going to um, kill your orchid. So that's why this is still like this. This is also an orchid that I received from my orchid society. It has not done anything um, since I've had it, which was back in um, November. That's the last orchid meeting that we had. It has not done anything in three months. So we're talking about how to get orchids out of dormancy. So a lot of my videos that are to come are going to be centered around that. This is another orchid that I received from Redlands, okay? Now, this is um, my Phalaenopsis Nina that I named after Orchid's Diva's um, camera girl. And as you can see, I have not done the work to her as well. But the reason why they are sitting in water is because before I repot them, before I do too much to them, I like to see that new root production and that new leaf production before I start to really doctor on them because sometimes we get too antsy with the Phalaenopsis orchids and do more harm than we do with good. Really? Thank you for staying tuned. As you can see, I really love my Phalaenopsis orchids. So below are the two Phalaenopsis orchids that I actually have in spite and that are about to um, bloom for me. This is another orchid that I received from my orchid society, free of charge, by the way, they were giving them away. Um, and she is now in bloom in spite. She is also a Phalaenopsis orchid that I chose not to repot, okay? And we will talk about that in a later video, but as you can see, the buds are, um, they are sure to come. I don't know what kind of Phalaenopsis orchid this is, so the blooms are going to be a surprise. So I'm very excited about that, very excited. This right here is another orchid that I received from the Alabama Orchid Show. And um, she had the longest spike ever, and her spike had actually broken off. I put her outside, um, and as you can see, she is now forming buds on her spike. Hopefully, I would get at least seven buds from her. This is what happens when you fail to train the flower spike. I was training it very well. I was training the spike very well, and then all of a sudden, I had to go somewhere for a few days, my husband and I went out on out, out on the town, and when I came back, it was too late for me to make any adjustments to the stalk. Also, also, she shot off this off spike or this offshoot right here. So she has two spikes on the same spike, but this one right here, you can see it blasted, and I don't see anything else growing from it. But I definitely would keep you guys um, tuned. Um, this is a leaf that was set back. I told you anytime that you move it from one environment to another, you probably will have some type of setback, meaning that the leaf is smaller than the previous leaf. They should always get bigger in size. But as you can see with her reblooming, her in the pot growing roots everywhere, she's doing just fine. So thank you so much for staying tuned. More to come.